Hello and good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Josh and I'm here at Arizona Science Center. This is today's class on STEM and early literacy for young learners and we are so excited to have you whether this is your first time joining us or you've been here with us since the beginning last week. Uh, and also thank you so much for staying at home and practicing safe social distancing to help us flatten the curve. We really appreciate you. So today I wanted to try something a little bit different because I am not originally from Arizona and the more I am living in the desert and the longer I'm spending here in the desert, the more beautiful I am realizing this place is. And I think when I first moved to the desert, I had a certain image in my head and everything is brown and the only green are cactuses and you know, we're just, we're in the desert. And the longer I've lived here, I've been here for just over two years now, the more beautiful I'm realizing today, the more I'm realizing how beautiful this place is. So I did all of these things and we're going to have our story and our activity based on wildlife in Arizona, and also some things that I just found on a nature exploration right outside. So thank you all so much for those of you joining. Again, if you just popped in, my name is Josh here at the Arizona Science Center, and let's get started. So today's book is Desert Night, Desert Day by Anthony Fredericks. And as we are reading, I'm going to have a quail. And you might wonder why I have a quail, and I'm gonna show you. What's fun about this story, Desert Night, Desert Day, is that on every single page of the story, there's going to be a quail. Sometimes it's going to be the focus and right up front. Other times, he's going to be smaller and more hidden. So let us know every time we turn a page. Hopefully you're going to be able to help me find the quail. Sometimes my skills of observation, sometimes I'm very good at observing things and noticing details, sometimes I'm not. But that's okay because that's a skill I'm still working on. So we found our quail on this page and let's get started. Sonoran night, dancing light, shadows plain, full moon bright. And as we turn this page, look and see if you can find the quail while I'm reading or before I do. Above the ground, high pitched sound, tiny owls, fluffy and round. So we can see our owls flying by. We've got one, two, three owls flying by. Hmm, but can we find the quail? Does anyone see it? It's a little bit more hidden on this page. If you notice, he's at the base of the cactus, pretty tiny. So sometimes he's easy to find and sometimes he's not. Bristly hair, tusks beware, javelinas eat prickly pear, right? So we have one, two, three javelinas eating our delicious prickly pear. Well, delicious for javelinas. You might have to let us know in the comments whether you think prickly pears would be delicious for humans. And we have our owl, but hmm, where could our quail be? Hmm. This is pretty tricky. Has anyone found him yet? If you can find our quail, let us know in the comments below. So I'm looking, I'm not seeing him over here, but I think way off in the distance, we've got our friend the quail in the background. Ooh, stingers lash, whip and dash, scorpions grab in a flash. We have one, two very large looking scorpions and a little beetle or a bug. I don't really know, to be honest. And as I'm looking, I'm still trying to find the quail. Hmm. The quail's pretty good at hiding. It's very good at blending into its environment. Hmm. I'm not seeing it in the background, but if we start to look, oh, I see just his face over here on the side. Cool. Nuzzling nose, sleep and doze. Young fox rests quickly grows, right? And here are our young foxes resting their tired little eyes. And there is our scorpion from the previous page. I'm looking and I don't, oh, there's our quail. Did you see him as quickly as I did? Hmm, maybe. You all seem to be very good at finding things. Cool. Leaping, popping, seldom stopping. Tiny rats, hip, hop, hopping. We have one, two, three, four, five, six tiny rats, and oh, there's our friend, Mr. Quail. With voices strong, a concert long, coyotes sing their lonesome song. We have one, two, three, four coyotes howling at the moon. Ow! I don't know if that was a very good coyote howl, but we're doing the best we can. And if we look by our coyotes, here's our friend, Mr. Quail hiding right behind them. Cool. Now night is done, 
new days begun, daytime critters greet the sun. So we have all sorts of different desert critters going around. We have a hare, we have a turtle or a tortoise, and we have some chipmunk looking creatures. If you know the technical name, if you are an expert on desert flora and fauna, desert plants and animals, please comment below. <laughs> comment below. I would love to learn what these are actually called and make sure I'm not saying anything incorrectly. But one thing I do know for sure is our friend, Mr. Quail. He is hiding right there. Cool. A heated breeze through mesquite trees, lizards beep up the twos and threes. We have one, two, three, four, five lizards. And have you found Mr. Quail yet? Good job. We have our friend, Mr. Quail, hiding underneath the lizard's plane. Dash, rush, scurry, sudden flurry, running rabbits in a hurry. We have one, two, three, four running rabbits. And did you see what I saw? Right underneath our fourth running rabbit. Who do we have right there? Good job, we have our friend, Mr. Quail. Cool. Ooh, slipping, sliding, watching, gliding. Banded king snake, darting, hiding. We have one slithering king snake who is very large and takes up both pages. Hmm, this is a bit tricky. Can you find Mr. Quail? Hmm, I'm looking and I don't see Mr. Quail on this page. And as I look over, I don't see Mr. Quail. But what do we have right here? We may not have Mr. Quail, but what do we have? We have his shadow. That's right, good job everyone. He's probably hiding from the king snake. I would be too. Cool. Landscape sweeping, old beast peeping, desert tortoise slowly creeping, right? So here we have our desert tortoise. And as we are looking for Mr. Quail, hmm, I don't see his shadow anywhere. I also don't see his face. Do you maybe see a part of him somewhere? Hmm, this is getting tricky. Mr. Quail's getting good at hiding. But that's right. If we look up here, we can see the lower half of his body. Good job, everyone. You all are great at making observations. Cool. Regal head, tails of red, hawks are soaring overhead. We have one, two, three hawks soaring overhead. And if we look way in the distance, we have our friend the desert tortoise from the last page. But hmm, where is our friend Mr. Quail? Are you still looking? I am. I actually can't find Mr. Quail on this page. Oh, very good. He's off in the distance. That one was tricky, huh? Through the day, in jeweled array, butterflies dance and play. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight butterflies dancing and playing. And this time, nice and easy to find, we have Mr. Quail up front. He's probably dancing and playing along with the butterflies. Sun, moon high, a desert sky, busy creatures crawl, run, fly. And if we look, we have all of our desert friends that we've met throughout the story, including our friend, Mr. Quail. That was it for today's story. Again, that was Desert Night, Desert Day by Anthony Fredericks. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed the story and looking for Mr. Quail as much as I can. Are you all ready for today's activity? Cool, let's do it. Cool. So. Again, as I mentioned, for those of you who are just joining us, my name is Josh and I'm here at Arizona Science Center. And I have a bunch of fun things for us to make observations about as we do a little desert exploration of our own. So these are some things that my really gracious roommate who is from Arizona and has lived here longer than I have, went out and collected at Papago Park, I believe, or maybe hiking. I don't actually know where she got them. But these are some different mesquite pods, I believe. Again, if you are an expert on desert plants and animals, please let us know. I will say what I know, and I am more than happy to say what I don't know. But these, I believe, are different types of mesquite pods. We have a pine cone, 
And we have some other samples in these viewers, where if we look, this is skin from a rattlesnake that we've collected here at the Arizona Science Center. And this is an actual quail feather. And as I mentioned in my introduction, I'm not from the desert, but I love living here and I'm getting to see just how diverse and how very different the environments that we all across our great state are. So this morning, I went on a little desert exploration of my own right here in downtown Phoenix. But as you can guess, a lot of the plants that I found right outside are beautiful, but may or may not be uh, native to the desert. So some of the things I found on my walk right outside of Arizona Science Center, I found some different leaves. If you know what this is, it said it was a rubber fig online, but sometimes that's deceitful. So this could be a rubber tree, this could be a fig tree. If you know, please tell me. I'm genuinely very curious and I haven't been able to find out for a fact. Please let us know in the comments below. And I was really excited because if you look at this leaf, this leaf is literally the size of my face and I think that's awesome. And as you look at the leaves in different states of decomposition, right? so I was pretty careful to do my best to only pick things up that had already fallen off of the ground to make sure we're being as sustainable as possible. And I just like that this twirls because I'm a giant child and I think this is really fun. So I hope you go and share with us all of the cool things you find on your own exploration. We also found a lot of different plants in the local area. So this is our California poppy. This is a lantana. This is a fairy duster plant which is super cool and the bees seem to love. There were lots of bees as I was looking at all these different plants this morning. And I don't know what the rest of the things are that I found. I just think they look really cool. So as we're getting started with today's activity, for today's activity, I am going to use construction paper, model magic, which is kind of like Play-Doh, and some of the plants that I found. And I wanna make my desert landscape based on all the plants and things that I found this morning. Uh, if you also wanna collect any rocks or any sticks, I think those are also great choices. Also, if you don't have construction paper and model magic laying around at home, that is completely fine. You can use paper, you can use crayons to help you create your landscape. You can also use glue, scotch tape, whatever you have laying around. This is your desert landscape, which means you get to make it however you want. So I am going to pick brown because this is the piece of construction paper laying on top. And as yet another disclaimer, I have not taken an art class since I was in elementary school which has been a while. So I have an idea in my head and we're gonna see how this goes. But science is all about trying, whether it goes the way you plan or not, that's how we learn. So I want to take some clumps of model magic and I'm going to try and recreate the walk that I took outside. So I walked out of Arizona Science Center and as soon as I got outside the door, that is where I found some of these really cool little plants. So this is where I found California poppy and I'm going to save it stays up. And it does. Sometimes ideas work out the way you plan, and that's awesome. And when they don't, that is also awesome. And then I walked a little bit further, and I walked outside of our Create building, which had a lot of beautiful flowers that I do not think I've ever taken the time to appreciate before. But outside of our Create building is where I found our lantana, and where I found our fairy duster. Ooh, is that gonna stay? Oh, this is working way better than I thought it would to be completely honest. And then I continued walking across Heritage Square Park and taking another clip. Over here, went through a walk and on the other side of the park, I found some of these little flower pods that I'm actually just gonna sprinkle around because I want to. And this is my desert landscape. Let us know what your desert landscape looks, looks like as you make yours. And then here are some flowers that had fallen off the bush. And these are also over here. And I just really like the color. Again, if you know what they are called, please let me know. Uh, Nicole has put in the comments that it's Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. All right, and am I saying, that's a cool name, Bougainvillea. Awesome, thank you, Nicole. Again, seriously, chime in, we'll give you a shout out and I will learn something and that's really what I'm here to do. Nicole also wanted to let you know that the chipmunk at the beginning is the Panamint chipmunk. So thanks, Nicole. The Panamint? Panamint, Pan Panamint chipmunk. Panamint chipmunk. That's really cool. Thank you, Nicole. Cool, awesome.
And for the last little bit of my journey, we have one other thing, and Nicole or anyone else who knows, I have no idea what this one is called either. But I finished my walk over here, where I found the last two items I'm going to use. And I don't know what this is called, but it was a plant that kind of floated around and looked like this, and that's embarrassing on camera, but you're welcome. So <laughs> this was actually a really long stem that was about this long, it was just laying on the ground, and it kind of swayed on the ground, it was about this high, whatever it's called. I think it looked cool. So I'm gonna put it in my desert landscape. And the very last thing, which hmm, the model Maddox worked pretty well, is again, this potentially rubber fig leaf, potentially something else. Let me know. And that, it's gonna stand up. Jeff just said the yellow one is a yellow dancing Josh tree leaf, so. A yellow dancing Josh tree leaf. So I don't know if that's a, Dancing Josh, you are the dancing Josh. Or... <laughs> That's, I, it, yes, that may be the name, or maybe it's named after my sweet dance moves. Who knows? But thank you, Jess. We appreciate that. So again, this is my desert landscape. I want to see all of the wonderful things that you find in your neighborhood, in your local parks. Please remember, even as you're going through your very own desert and neighborhood explorations, to practice safe social distancing, maintaining at least six feet away from other people to help us flatten the curve. But Again, this is how I chose to do mine. If you want to use paper, if you want to use sidewalk chalk outside of your house or in your driveway, I think that is a great choice. If you want to use crayons to draw and outline the plants, I think that is awesome. I really hope to see all of your amazing artwork in all of your desert landscapes. Again, my name is Josh here at Arizona Science Center. Please join us every day, um, <laughs> every day, Monday through Saturday at 9.30 a.m. for STEM and early literacy, as well as our 1 p.m. live demos. Thank you all so much, and, and, I don't, say it again. Join us online at AZScience. join us online at azscience.org. You all have been awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of your expertise with desert plants and animals. Until next time.